So obesity is a very complex disease and it's not, it's about dysregulation of appetite, but also about uh, energy expenditure and even energy allocation. And the currently available pharmacotherapy actually targets just one aspect of the obesity pathogenesis and that is appetite. But we are missing on many other factors which we need to explore. And again, epito is under a very complex control because it's under the control of a homeostatic mechanism. That is, if the body needs, there will be more appetite and also something known as the hedonic or the pleasure. So actually many of the drugs that are available to treat uh, obesity affects appetite and can affect the mood and even cause depression and things like that. There are many options, like I think one interesting option which may, we may uh, explore is the adipose tissue because it is a very important organ that is involved in the homeostasis of body weight maintenance. So I think we have not explored adipose tissue too much and that should be our focus, I, I, that's what I feel. Again, that's a very relevant question. So the adipose tissue, we can uh, take it as if it's an evolutionary program adaptation. So that when there is energy excess, it is stored in the adipose tissue as triglycerides or fat. And then when there is actually, uh, when we need more energy, when there is energy deficit state, it would be released. But then in this uh, era of energy excess, and less of expenditure, what happens is that the adipose tissue gets actually confused and then a whole lot of things takes place that includes inflammation, release of adipokines and that's how it is involved uh, in the homeostasis of the body weight maintenance and also uh, its disturbance can result in disturbances of body weight. Yes, some do. Uh, for example, the GLP, we have evidence with the GLP-1 receptor agonists like liraglutide, which, has, which are already used for, approved for weight loss. And uh, they do decrease the adipose tissue mass. And also the SGLT2 group of drugs, they do cause body loss, uh, weight loss, and more so the adipose tissue, the fat mass. On the other hand, we also have agents like uh, pioglitazone or the uh, um, pioglitazones. So actually they increase the adipose genesis, but at the same time, they improve the insulin sensitivity because they improve, increase adipose genesis in a very relevant areas that is in the subcutaneous adipose tissue, whereas they decrease the fat in the visceral adipose tissue. Again, there are many that are in uh, different stages of development, uh, research. So there is adipokine-based therapy where they are looking at leptin and leptin analogs and also, let's say, adiponectin. Uh, then again, they are targeting the brown adipose tissue, which is in, supposed to increase the energy expenditure. Also something to do with the PPR gamma signaling that is associated with adipogenesis and again targeting inflammation. So we have many in the pipeline and so I think uh, so this is the new way to look forward.